Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Kushbu Farwa and today the topic of our discussion is hemorrhagic fever viruses. It is from your virology portion and the book we are following is Medical Microbiology and Immunology, Levinson. Hemorrhagic fever viruses uh, a syndrome caused by infection with one of a virus that causes increased permeability of the blood vessels resulting in bleeding into the skin or sometime internally or from mouth. The bleeding is usually not life threatening but in some cases it may result in uh, death. Other signs and symptoms of viral hemorrhagic fever includes high fever, weakness, dizziness and myalgia. In some swear cases, there may be shock, coma, delirium, seizures, and death. Now, let's discuss the learning objectives uh, from hemorrhagic fever viruses. Our learning objectives will be, first of all, we will uh, see the description of the virus. Uh, either it is... DNA virus or RNA virus single stranded or double stranded uh, its classification then we will see the way of transmission of virus after that we will discuss how the virus enter in our body and which particular organ of the body it affects and after entering in the body and finding a safe environment for replication which signs and symptoms will appear in the patient that is affected with virus or we can say how a patient will present to us in clinic with which particular signs and symptoms a patient will visit us so that we could diagnose it accurately In lab diagnosis section, we will discuss how we will be able to diagnose a patient with hemorrhagic fever virus on the basis of lab tests and reports. After that, we will discuss the treatment option available for hemorrhagic fever viruses. Lastly, we will discuss the preventive measures we can take to avoid the uh, hemorrhagic fever viruses so these are families of RNA viruses that causes hemorrhagic fever viruses and it includes Arenaviridae, Filoviridae, Guniaviridae, Flaviviridae and lastly Rhabdoviridae Hemorrhagic fever viruses are divided into two types, common viruses and uncommon viruses. Common viruses are those which occur most frequently and their chances of occurrence are more as compared to uncommon viruses. And common viruses include chikungunya, dengue, zika, congo and yellow fever and encephalitis virus. While uncommon viruses include Ebola virus, Henta virus, Lesta fever virus, and Marburg virus. Uh, let's discuss chikungunya virus and it is very common. The name chikungunya is an African language, Makonde's word meaning to bend over in pain. Virus is spread to people by two types of mosquito, Aedes albopictus and Aedes aegypti. They mainly bite during the day. Virus may circulate within a number of animals including birds and rodents. The symptoms include fever, joint pain. These typically occur 2-12 to 12 days after exposure. Other symptoms may include headache, muscle pain joint swelling and rash. Symptoms usually improve within a week. 
However, the joint pain may last for months or years. The risk of death is around 1 in 1000. During outbreak due to high concentration of virus in the blood of those in the acute phase of infection, the virus can circulate from humans to mosquito and back to humans. The transmission of pathogen between human and mosquitoes exists in urban environment. It was established on multiple occasions from strains occurring in the eastern half of the Africa in non-human primate hosts. The spread beyond Africa was started in early 18th century. The introduction of chikungunya into Asia occurred in 19th century, while the disease typically occur in Africa and Asia. Outbreak have been reported in Europe and America since 2000. In 2014, more than a million suspected cases occurred. In April 2017, Ministry of National Health Services of Pakistan informed WHO of new figure for chikungunya cases in Pakistan. 121 positive cases were for chikungunya were found and no deaths were reported. Chikungunya is generally transmitted from mosquitoes to humans. Less common mode of transmission include vertical transmission, which is transmission from mother to child during pregnancy or at the time of delivery. Transmission via infected blood product and through organ donation is also theoretically possible during outbreak. The adaption of mosquitoes to the changing environment of North America around 5000 years ago made them seek out environment where humans store water. Human habitation and mosquitoes environment were then very closely connected. During period of epidemics, humans are the reservoir of virus because high amount of virus are present in blood in the beginning of acute infection. The virus can be spread from viremic human to a mosquito and back to a human. During other times, monkeys, birds and other vertebrates have served as reservoirs. Now coming towards the pathogenesis of chikungunya. Chikungunya virus is passed to human when a bite from an infected mosquito breaks the skin and introduces into the body. The pathogenesis of chikungunya infection in human appears to be able to replicate in human epithelium and endothelium cells, primary fibroblast and monocytes, drive macrophages, Viral replication is highly cytopathic but susceptible of type 1 and type 2 interferon. Chikungunya virus appears to replicate in the fibroblast, skeletal muscle, progenitor cells and myofibers. The type 1 interferon response seems to play an important role in host response to chikungunya infection. Host fibroblasts produce type 1 alpha and beta interferon in the acute phase of chikungunya the virus is typically present in the areas where symptoms appear particularly skeletal muscles and joints in chronic phase the viral persistence in the body contribute to the joint pain the inflammation response during both the acute and chronic phase of disease result in the interaction between virus and monocytes and macrophages chikungunya virus disease in human is associated with elevated serum level of specific cytokines and chemokines so on long term duration four types of cells are affected one muscle and joint two brain cells liver and spleen and lymph nodes if viral persist in the body and immune system which is activated in its response is cytokine and chemokine
सो लेट्स डिस्कस द क्लिनिकल साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ चिकनगुनिया वायरस इट हैज शॉर्ट इनक्यूबेशन पीरियड ऑफ टू टू टेन डेज एंड क्लासिकल सिम्टम्स ऑफ चिकनगुनिया इज फीवर रैश आर्थरेलजिया माइलजिया एंड हेड एक दिस इज डायग्राम जस्ट टू शो यू अंडरस्टैंड इट्स टाइम ड्यूरेशन so 2 to 6 days is incubation period of infection and in first week fever will appear and it will last for one week and this happens in 90% of the patients secondly myalgia will occur and it will last for 7 to 10 days and this appears in 92 in 90% of the patients third polyarthralgia or polyarthritis will appear and it will last for from weeks to months and this appears in 95% of the patients and it lasts for weeks to months as you can say uh, see its ranges towards weeks to months and lastly rash will appear and they will last for one week and these appear in 40 to 50% of the patients so viremia the presence of virus in blood it lasts for 5 to 7 days and biomarkers igm which is for acute infection it appears in 3 to 8 days after symptoms appear and it may last for 1 to 3 months while igg is a biomarker for the indication of chronic infection and it will appear from 4 to 10th day and its appearance in blood will remain till years how will we diagnose this virus in the blood through pcr treatment currently there is no antiviral available for chikungunya so symptomatic treatment will be done and mostly analgesics are given as patients complaint about arthralgia or myalgia headache fever and other symptoms will resolve in within a week but arthralgia and myalgia they will last for a longer time from months to year so analgesics will be prescribed for these types of patient coming towards our next hemorrhagic fever virus which is dengue fever what is dengue fever dengue fever is an illness caused by infection with a virus transmitted by aedes mosquito dengue fever also known as backbone fever it is an infectious tropical disease caused by dengue virus dengue is endemic in more than 110 countries it infects 50 to 100 million people worldwide a year leading to half a million hospitalization and approximately 12500 to 25000 deaths in a year Dengue has become a global problem since Second World War and is endemic. Therefore, travelers returning from endemic areas are unlikely to have dengue. If fever or other symptoms starts more than 14 years after arriving home, dengue fever is a RNA virus of family Flaviviridae and its genus is Flavivirus. most are transmitted by arthropods like mosquito or ticks and therefore are referred to as arboviruses meaning arthropod born viruses there are four types of virus which are also known as serotypes and they are referred to as 1 2 3 4 all four serotypes can cause full spectrum of disease 
Infection with one serotype is believed to produce lifelong immunity to that serotype but only short term protection against others. So dengue virus causes dengue and dengue hemorrhagic fever. It is arbovirus and within this group it is a flavivirus in the same family as the viruses that causes yellow fever, St. Louis encephalitis, West Nile fever and Japanese encephalitis transmitted by mosquitoes and as discussed earlier they are RNA virus single stranded and it has four serotypes. So, dengue virus infection can be acquired by a single bite. A female mosquito that takes a blood meal from a person infected with dengue fever becomes itself infected with the virus in the cells lining in gut. About 8 to 10 days later, the virus spread to other tissues including mosquito salivary gland and is subsequently released into the saliva. So, what is mode of transmission of dengue virus fever mosquito bites and suck blood containing the virus from an infected person virus is carried in mosquitoes body and it is then passes uh, passed over to a healthy person to whom it bite uh, coming towards the mechanism of pathogenicity which is going on in human body when a mosquito carrying dengue virus bites a person virus enters the skin together with the mosquito's saliva it binds and enters white blood cells and reproduce inside the cell while they move throughout the body in swear infection the virus production inside the body is greatly increased and many more organs are affected like liver and bone marrow the fluid from bloodstream leaks through the walls of small blood vessels into the body cavities as a result dead blood, less blood circulation in blood vessels and blood pressure became so low that it cannot supply sufficient blood to vital organs so dysfunction of bone marrow leads to reduced number of platelets which is necessary for effective blood clotting. This increases the risk of bleeding and other major complications of dengue fever appear. Coming towards the sign and symptoms. Asymptomatic or mild symptomatic such as an uncomplicated fever in 80% of the cases. In 5% cases, signs and symptoms will appear more severe. In a small portion, it is life-threatening. The incubation period, the time between exposure and onset of symptoms, it range from 3 to 14 days or mostly from 4 to 7 days. Now let's discuss the transmission of dengue virus by Aedes aegypti and it lasts for um, 1 to 28 days and it is composed of two incubation periods. One is extrinsic incubation period and other is intrinsic incubation period. Extrinsic incubation period is a time which is in mosquito when it feeds it acquires virus from infected human and second is intrinsic incubation period this is time period in a human body when mosquito refeeds and then it transmits virus to human so Extrinsic incubation period lasts from 1 to 
seven days or sometimes 12 and intrinsic incubation period lasts from 13 to 28 and onwards and viremic stage appears in 21 to 27 days and this is the time when virus is present or it can be detected in the human blood that is why it is called as viremia means presence of virus in blood so characteristic symptoms of dengue are sudden onset of fever headache typically behind the eyes muscle and joint pain sometimes appearance of rash alternative name for dengue is break bone fever comes from associated muscle and joint pain symptoms include fever headache muscle and joint pain and characteristic skin rash that is similar to malaise sorry measles in small proportion of cases disease develop into the life-threatening dengue hemorrhagic fever resulting in bleeding low level of blood platelet and blood plasma leakage into dengue shock syndrome where dangerously low blood pressure occur so antibodies directed against dengue virus show cross reactivity with human platelet and endothelial cells which lead to platelet and endothelial cell damage and inflammatory activation these are some of the warning signs when these appear then it means that patient is in critical condition and he must be taken care of very seriously and must be admitted to hospital and these are abdominal pain ongoing vomiting liver enlargement mucosal bleeding high hematocrit with low platelets and lethargy The course of infection is divided into three phases, febrile, critical and recovery phase. First, let's see febrile phase and in this high fever appear and generalized pain with headache which usually lasts two to seven days. Then rashes appear and Later, the course of illness in 4 to 7 days, measles like rash appear. Some petechiae, small red spots that do not disappear when the skin is pressed, which are caused by broken capillaries, can appear at this point as some mild bleeding from mucous membrane of mouth and nose then the second phase is critical phase uh, critical phase which follows the resolution of high fever and typically lasts one to two days and it includes significant fluid accumulation in the chest and abdominal cavity due to increased capillary permeability and leakage it leads to depletion of fluid from the circulation and decreased blood supply to vital organs resulting in low blood pressure. Others include organ dysfunction and sphere bleeding typically from GIT, shock, hemorrhage occur in 5% of dengue cases. However, those who have previous been, previously been infected with other serotypes of dengue virus, secondary infection are at an increased risk. The last phase is recovery phase. 
and it includes resorption of liquid fluid into the bloodstream. This usually lasts two to three days. Severe itching and slow heart rate. During this stage, fluid overload state may occur. If it affects the brain, it may cause a reduced level of consciousness and seizures. These are some of the problems that will appear after onset of dengue fever and these include decreased level of consciousness, infection of brain by the virus or indirectly as a result of impairment of vital organs for example liver, other neurological disorders such as transverse mellitus, Julian Bear syndrome, infection of heart and acute liver failure are among the rare complications that appear after the onset of dengue fever. Some clinical manifestation of dengue and dengue hemorrhagic fever. There are actually four dengue clinical syndrome. Number one is undifferentiated fever. Number two, classic dengue fever. Number three, dengue hemorrhagic fever or DHF. Dengue shock syndrome or DSS. Dengue shock syndrome is actually a severe form of DHF. Dengue hemorrhagic fever. Some clinical characteristics of dengue fever. Dengue fever is an acute viral illness characterized by fever which often occur spontaneously sudden onset that means severe headache often described as retroocular behind the eyes myalgias arthralgias that can be very severe nausea and vomiting rash that may present at different stages of illness and those and whose appearance can be variable and it may be maculopapular, petechial or erythematous and some other hemorrhagic manifestations. This is appearance of rashes and this is classic signs of hemorrhagic, dengue hemorrhagic fever. Hemorrhagic manifestation of dengue are skin hemorrhages, petechia, purpura or ecchymosis, gingival, gingival bleeding means bleeding from bleeding from gums, nasal bleeding, GIT bleeding, hematuria and increased menstrual flow. So here is a quick review of uh, all the warning signs of dengue uh, starting from the bottom. Uh, when patient develop DSS 3 to 6 days after onset of symptoms. Second is initial warning signs, disappearance of fever, drop in platelets, increase in hematocrit. Then Four criteria for DHF, fever, hemorrhagic manifestation, excessive capillary permeability and uh, platelet count less than 100,000 cubic per millimeter and finally alarming signs, severe abdominal pain, prolonged uh, vomiting, abrupt change from fever to hypothermia, change in level of consciousness. So this is the quick review. Remember this. How will we diagnose dengue fever in lab? First test is blood test CBC and in CBC we will see the count of WBC platelets and hematocrit. Albumin level check karenge, liver function test, 
and in urine we will check for microscopic hematuria means presence of blood in the urine and the NGE specific tests are also available where in which virus isolation can be checked this is timeline of symptoms and it will be telling about the uh, severity of infection either it is chronic or acute so on the day uh, second to fifth day if we uh, check the blood of this patient virus can be isolated from the blood and from fifth day on from the onset of an, uh, symptoms to the fifth day uh, if IgM is detected in the blood it indicates that the infection is acute and on eighth day and so on for months to years the IgG level is in, will be increased indicating that the infection is in chronic stage finally coming towards the treatment and if a patient has no hemorrhagic manifestation and he is well hydrated he or she can be sent home with instructions for follow-up if there are hemorrhagic manifestation or hydration status is borderline the patient should be observed either in outpatient observation center or in hospital the warning signs are present even without the evidence of shock if DSS is present the patient should be hospitalized so let's discuss the prevention methods that we can apply to be safe from this dengue hemorrhagic virus there are no approved vaccine for the dengue virus so prevention is better and prevention depend on control of and protection from the bite of mosquito that transmit it primary method of controlling mosquito is by uh, eliminating its habitat and this is done by emptying containers of water by adding insecticides or biological control agents to the areas reducing open collection of water through environmental modification people can prevent mosquito bites by wearing clothes that are fully covered using mosquito netting and application of insect repellent so the next hemorrhagic virus we were is zika virus zika virus is a member of virus family flaviviridae spread by daytime active aedes mosquitoes such as aedes aegypti and aedes albopictus the name came from Zika forest of Uganda where virus was first isolated in 1947 so discussing its history flavi virus is similar to yellow fever dengue west nile it is transmitted from one partner to another during intercourse or it can be transmitted from other to baby during pregnancy or at the time of delivery or it can be transmitted during blood transfusion and people of all age group are at risk of getting this infection Zika virus primarily spread through bite of infected mosquitoes. Aedes species mosquitoes are principal vector. Aedes mosquito can also carry other arbovirus including dengue, 
yellow fever chikungunya japanese encephalitis and west nile virus zika virus infection in human transmission during the first week of infection zika virus can be detected in the blood and is capable of being spread from one infected person to a mosquito that feeds on that person infected mosquito can then spread the virus to other people through bite direct contact with infectious blood or tissue or other body fluids such as semen through uh, intercourse of infected person may result in transmission of the virus so although most documented is uh, through intercourse then it is detect detectable in semen it can remain there for at least 2 weeks <clears throat> it is rna virus and the third thing it causes is crying zika means it is capable of infecting the eyes so here is zika virus transmission cycle infected mosquito will bite the first person and it will transfer the virus in that person and if it is female then there are chances that it will be transmitted to baby or otherwise it will infect liver and blood cells and infected blood cells are as infected blood cells circulate in the body and second infected aedes mosquito by that person then it will transmit that infected blood to second healthy person how zika virus enters human population so from animals to mosquitoes and then mosquitoes to group of healthy people and from healthy people it will transmit the virus to other people and a female is more prone to get infected and there are chances that virus will cross the placenta so coming towards the symptoms of zika infection many have symptoms but many don't the typical symptoms which appear in some people are fever rash joint pain or red eyes also muscle pain coming towards the last uh, hemorrhagic fever virus which is cremin congo hemorrhagic fever and question is what is cremin congo hemorrhagic fever it is caused by tick-borne virus niro virus uh, in the family guniaviridae the disease was first characterized in Crimea in 1944 and given the name Crimean hemorrhagic fever it was then later recognized in 1969 as the cause of illness in Congo thus resulting in the current name of the disease Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever is caused by infection with tick-borne viruses Niro virus in the family Guniaviridae, and this is its structure. C C H F V is a member of Niro virus genus of family Guniaviridae. Other genera within the family include Orthogonia virus and Hanta virus. it is tick borne disease 
स्प्रेड टू ह्यूमन आइदर बाय टेक बाइट और थ्रू कॉन्टैक्ट विद वायरेमिक एनिमल टिश्यू ड्यूरिंग एंड इमीजिएटली आफ्टर स्लॉटर Women Congo hemorrhagic fever is a wide spread tick-borne viral disease a zoonosis of domestic animal and wild animals that may affect humans Outbreak of illness are usually attributed to handling affected animals or people Numerous wild and domestic animals such as cattle, goats, sheep, hares serve as amplifying host for the virus transmission to human occurring through contact with infected animal blood or ticks. This is its cycle shown. So it is take off small mammals or birds then its larvae is produced and egg are formed finally it will convert into adult form and it will be transmitted to the cattle and while handling that cattle um, these will be transmitted to humans and from humans to other healthy human human contact can spread the disease it can be transmitted from one infected human to another by contact with infectious blood or body fluid documented spread of crimean uh, congo hemorrhagic fever has also occurred in hospital due to improper sterilization of medical equipment reuse of injection needles and contamination of medical supplies let's discuss its pathophysiology the target organ is the vascular bed dominant clinical features are due to microvascular damage and change in vascular permeability in most cases of viral hemorrhagic fever the coagulopathy is multifactorial including hepatic damage disseminated intravascular coagulation primary marrow injury to megakaryocytes so in this picture some organs are shown which are affected by crimean congo hemorrhagic fever nose and gum bleeding rashes on the body liver failure or sometimes internal bleeding and in this picture you can see internal bleeding of patient who are at risk people at most risk for Uh, crimean congo hemorrhagic fever include livestock worker people who herd animal and people who work in slaughterhouse 